Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to work uh, with joints in Coppelia Sim software or VREP and how to configure them. Ok, so first let's start by knowing where or how to add a new joint in our simulation. We have the add menu here and we have the joint and we have the three different types of joints. We have a revolute joint, we have a prismatic joint and then we have also a spherical joint. Okay? In this example here I have just prepared an example in which I have configured different type of joints and uh, in this case all of them are uh, prismatic but yeah you can see uh, similar things with revolute joints too. Ok, so let's try to understand first what we're doing in this simulation. Here we have a joint which is this one which is uh, if you double click on the, on the icon you can get to the properties of the joint of the object and then you can see here that you have different modes. Okay? In this case this joint is set to torque force mode but uh, as I explained in a previous video you can also use the passive mode, the inverse kinematic mode or even the dependent mode. Okay? So this is the force torque mode means, means that the joint is uh, dynamic and therefore you can activate or uh, set here the properties for uh, dynamic joints and in this case there's no motor enabled so it's just simply joint without a motor and which means that this link here, this object here by gravity will fall down because there's no act, uh, actuator. Okay? So uh, let me just open this Uh, sorry, not this one, this one and this one, yeah, exactly. So, this is uh, the first joint. The second one, which corresponds to that one, is uh, in this case again torque force mode and has a motor enabled, so it's actuated and also has a control loop enabled, in particular the position control uh, with the PAD. This one here, the next one, will be exactly the same but instead of position control we'll have a spring damper mode which basically will uh, set or will act as a, a spring damper and because of the gravity will just simply fall down but not completely. This joint here is motor enabled so it's actuated but there's no control loop enabled so it means indeed that it's in a velocity mode so we can set the target velocity and this will move accordingly. Here we, it is just simply uh, stopped but you can do that uh, through programming. This joint here, the next one here, is a passive mode. It's in passive mode as you can see here but we have activated the hybrid operation which means that indeed the motor or the joint is actuated with a motor and we can select either if we want to set the position control or the spring number. In this case is the, is the position control. This one here, the next one, is in passive mode again but the hybrid mode is not activated. Okay? This should be correct if the, the object we move is static but if we take a look to the object here, if we see the properties this object is dynamic, so this is not correct. Okay, so it, 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 it can uh, uh, send us a, a warning or could gen generate uh, incorrect simulations. So this is just simply to show uh, an incorrect case. Okay? This one here is indeed the, the correct way to do things, is the joint is exactly in the same way, so it's passive and is, uh, the hybrid mode is not activated, but the object here is a static, so it's the dynamic uh, uh, property is not active, is not enabled. Okay, so the object is a static, and that's fine, that's correct. Okay, and the last one here is the other way around. So the, the thing is that the, the joint in this case is in a torque force mode, which means that it's dynamic, could be passive mode with hybrid operation, whatever, it's still dynamic. But the object we're moving here, if we take a look is static and this will also generate problems. Okay? Indeed, if we run the simulation we will see the, the, this message here that is actually indicating us that there's a warning here 
caused by the, the fact that this joint is dynamic, but it's moving a non-dynamic object, it's a static object, okay? So this is not the proper way to do things, okay? And that, that's why we get the, the warning. Indeed, if we stop and run it again, you see that this joint here, because it was not actuated, has fall down. This one has this one has a position control enabled, so yeah, it's just simply uh, controlling uh, exactly the, the weight or this, this link here on a, the, the expected position. This was in a spring damper mode, impedance control, so it has just simply fall down a little bit until uh, the, the spring or the, the force caused by the spring is strong enough to uh, hold this, this block here. This is in target velocity mode, at the moment it's a stop, but yeah. And then we have this passive uh, hybrid position, so this could be more or less equivalent to that one. The difference is that here uh, we need to modify the target position uh, using the script. And um, in this case is uh, the case in which was uh, passive and non-hybrid, but this was a dynamic uh, object, that's, that's why it has been somehow broken, okay, so it's, it's not working properly. And this one is exactly the expected behavior if we use a static object, it doesn't fall because it's a static, but it's not causing problems. And this one here is actually causing a problem and it's not working properly, okay. Well, I hope with all these examples I've shown here, you have more or less a clear idea how to work with joints in CompileSim or VREP software. Thank you very much.